eight well, percent polls. I mean, people feel well, dis a lot of let's, Lib Dems are so disappointed. I, well, I'm not sure if that's true. Actually, so, some do, some do. But of course, there are compromises. Of course, there were famously decisions that we couldn't put into practice that we wanted to. But if I look at the things we've done. You know, if, if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't now be having more money going to schools for, for disadvantaged kids. The two-year-old toddlers wouldn't be getting free help for preschool, you know, support and childcare. But there's all... lots of things that you couldn't do, so well, it must be very frustrating. You were there are many, many more, many, many more things we did do, rather, and, and I totally accept yeah. there are some people who will never forgive and never forget, mm. you know, f particularly the one thing we couldn't do on tuition fees, but I hope there are lots of other people who are getting fairer taxes, more apprenticeships, more money in local schools for kids. They're, they're, they're little toddlers in reception class in years one and two, are getting free school meals because of the uh, but they liberal don't Democrat. necessarily associate that with you. That's well, the that's trouble. why I have to go and tell them. Well, that's the thing, and you and you weren't. I mean, last week you were kind of frozen out of of the of the leaders' debate last week. Were you at home throwing things at the telly, saying, "I wish I was there"? Uh, well, I was actually in a pub in uh, my constituency in in uh, in South. But it must Sheffield. be so frustrating for well, you. Well, that was frustrating actually because uh, I just people did... thought that you you decided not to go. Yeah, which is a nonsense. I wanted to go, and I've been telling the BBC Embassy, and I was quite I was very irritated that they said that I chose not to go. Of course, I wanted wanted to be there, because I thought it was quite a, to be honest, a bit of a lopsided debate, to have no one there to speak up for what we've done in government over the last well, five years. Well, it's an open years. goal for everyone that was there. Yeah, then. everybody else can take pot shots mm. and criticise. But look, we've had to do some really difficult things over the last five years, and I'll tell you why I sort of feel this very strongly, as a dad as much as anything mm. else, is there's nothing fair about simply saying, OK, well, we're going to shrug our shoulders and let our kids and our grandkids you know, pick up the tab for the mistakes of the bankers, to pick up this generation's debts. At some point, it, you have to wipe the slate clean. Otherwise, you're spending all your money yeah. on this generation's debts rather than on the next generation's schools and hospitals. And that's why I think getting that balance right between balancing the books, doing it fairly, but putting money into schools and hospitals is the balance that I believe only the Liberal Democrats can offer, because everybody else is rushing off to one extreme or the other. But the trouble is, the trouble is, people have become disenchanted with you and with your party what? and you might not be there in the next time I mean should you be should it happen that you actually do have a voice and that it looks like there's going to be a co coalition mm. it's too close to call mm. would you rather get into bed with the Tories <laughs> or get into bed with Labour and, and um, possibly the SNP how do you do no, you, well, not, you must certainly, think certainly, about certainly that certainly you must think about that certainly not the SNP one thing I can rule out is I'm, I'm not in the slightest bit interested I mean I know the Conservatives have playing footsie with UKIP, with this yeah. right-wing alliance with UKIP, and Labour playing footsie with the SNP. Although they've I, ruled it out. Labour have well, ruled then out. they say there might be an alliance. Mm, yeah, Look, yeah. I'm not going to have an alliance, I'm not going to have an arrangement, not a coalition with UKIP or the SNP. As for the other two larger uh, parties, it's for you to decide, or millions of people watching this, to decide through their vote in the ballot box yeah. which of those two larger parties... Ha I don't think either of them are going to win. In fact, they know they're not going to win. Mm. So the question is not, is Ed Miliband and David Cameron, are one of those two going to go into number 10? It's who's going to go in there alongside them. And I personally think it's much better to have Liberal Democrats around the Cabinet table than Alex Salmon and Nigel Farage. But you might not be able to. You might not win enough seats. Well, I think we will. I think we will. And look, I mean, you, you say to people, of course, some people might not like this decision. Do you know what? There are some people who don't like the fact that I stepped up to the plate and the Liberal Democrats stepped up to the plate to create the coalition. If we hadn't, remember back at, you know, five years, we mm. could have been Greece. Our deficit was almost as bad as Greece's. Our banking crisis was even worse. Unemployment would be much higher. Many, many more young people would now be out of work. Interest rates would be higher. I wouldn't want that on my conscience. And at the end of the day, in politics just as in life, you've got to take risks to try and do what you judge for the best possible motives to be the right to do the right thing, which is what we have tried to do over the last five years. Now, some people may not like it. I actually am discovering as I go around the country, I'm going to be in Cornwall later today, that where people hear from us directly, they actually think we've done a good thing over the last five years. So no regrets? None at all. None at all. No. Well, no, of course, some individual regrets, but <laughs> yes. overall not, no. Right.